guys, Dave Nier right here, and today I got another video review for you. And I was considering just doing another spoiler video talking about The Force Awakens, because I just want to keep on talking about The Force Awakens, but I decided to restrain myself on that, and plus I wanted to do at least one more Christmas movie review for you guys. And if by chance this review does get posted in early January, you know, obviously it's outside of the Christmas season to an extent, I apologize, but it's still within the realm of Christmas break, so, you know, and I'm sure most of our viewers are, you know, school students and Minecrafters like us, you know, about our age group. But anyways, you know, I'm just making a guess there. But the point is, you know, it's, it's not that far away from Christmas season. But anyway, guys, the movie that I'm reviewing today is, it's a pretty cliche thing to say nowadays that like, oh, this is my favorite Christmas movie. Haha, <laughs> I'm so clever. It's my favorite. But nonetheless, it's a great movie. And this movie is Die Hard. Yes, I mean, it's it's technically a Christmas movie. I don't need to make a case for why it's a Christmas movie. Pretty much everyone is like, yeah, yeah, Die Hard, best Christmas movie ever. Ha <laughs> ha, get it? Because it's technically a Christmas movie. You're not that smart if you come up with that joke. It's, it's not hard to tell. Christmas is just shoved in your face throughout the entire movie. You see Christmas lights and decorations and one of the main musical cues to signify that something big is about to happen or an action sequence is about to start in this movie is sleigh bells jingling. So, yeah, it, it's a Christmas action movie. But anyways, sorry, let's get to the plot. Um, you probably know it. Man, it is a simple plot, but John McClane, played by Bruce Willis, he goes to see his wife, and, uh, and they're not divorced yet, but they're kind of riding that line, like maybe they don't want to get married anymore, but he goes to see her at work on Christmas Eve, and they're going to go home, and he's going to, like, you know, stay at their her place, because they're living in separate homes now, and, uh, you know, it's going to see his kids for Christmas time, but before that he has to, you know, be in this party, and while he's in a changing room, terrorists take over the building, and they, um, you know, they take a whole bunch of the office workers hostage, including his wife, and now John McClane, he's the only guy in this building, because all the other security guards have already been killed, he has to save the people in the building. All the while, he's trying to contact ground forces and other police officers, but, you know, they're not exactly cooperating with them, and you get one of the best action movies ever made. Now, okay, the first time I saw this movie, I didn't actually watch it all the way through. I watched it on TV uh, when I was eight, but I was watching it off and on, and, like, I heard my parents, like, over and over again be like, oh, you gotta watch Die Hard when you're older, David. It's so awesome. It's, like, great. And, you know, I was like, oh, cool, cool, it'd be awesome. And then it showed on TV around Christmas time one time when I was, like, eight. I was like, yes, it's gonna be awesome. And then I sat down. And, like, I mean, like I said, I was watching it off and on. I kept on, like, leaving the room and then coming back to see the movie. And it just so happened that every time I walked into the room, it was a part to where there was no action. And so it left me with the impression to where I was like, this isn't really an action movie. There's no action at all. And I got bored. And plus, I just had a shorter attention span when I was that young. But... Uh, then I got older, and, uh, you know, I saw all kinds of reviews from a bunch of YouTubers, like, oh my gosh, Die Hard is, like, one of the best action movies ever. I was like, okay, I'll give it another shot. Uh, but the problem at that time was I was overhyped, like, okay, Die Hard, Die Hard, come on, I'm gonna love it this time, I'm gonna love it. And I was, you know, like, I mean, I was seeing certain problems, but I was, like, forcing myself to n not take my... It was just, I did a poor job of watching this movie the first few times I watched it. However... Recently, I sat down, I was like, you know, I'm just going to clear my mind. I like the movie or I won't. Okay, let's watch Die Hard. Guess what? It's amazing. I finally get it. I quit, like, watching this movie under the wrong conditions. I just cleared my mind and sat down and watched the movie and absorbed everything that it threw at me. And everything it threw at me was awesome because this movie's amazing. It really is one of the best action movies ever made. And it's one of the best Christmas movies ever made. <laughs> I know, I'm not clever. Anyways, um, so yeah. Die Hard. Um, first of all, characters are great. John McClane is ridiculously likable. He's, you know, and this movie was pretty revolutionary in the 80s. I mean, technically you had, on occasion, you'd have a vulnerable action hero like Indiana Jones in the early 80s, you know, 1981, but he was one of the few instances to where you don't have a John Rambo or a, I can't remember the name of Arnold Schwarzenegger's character in Commando, but the guy in Commando, or, you know, you, you, generally the action heroes they had in the 80s were... Like, you know, Steven Seagal, or Jean-Claude Van Damme, or Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, blah, 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 Chuck Norris, you know. And they're invincible. They didn't aim. They just fire from the hip and hit, like, 50 enemies at a time. And finally, and you only had a couple movies that were more realistic. This movie, 
is much more realistic than the, those movies. Now, don't get me wrong, Die Hard isn't realistic, but it has something that John, or John McTiernan, the director of this film, coined exaggerated realism. Like, it's much more realistic than action movie, the majority of action movies from the 80s, and it is largely realistic, but a little bit more exaggerated. When people get shot, blood sprays out a little bit farther than it normally would in, like, in real life, and, you know... And, like, you know, people survive explosions in situations to where, like, they probably wouldn't survive explosions right there, you know. But, nonetheless, it's, like, you know, it's pretty believable, you know. It's, like, not outside the realm of reality, though extremely unlikely. But it is still just barely possible. But, anyway, so, yeah, this movie is, like, just on the realm of being, like, just impossible and possible. <laughs> Anyways, uh, but, yeah. And, uh... It's a great movie, and yeah, John McClane, he is, he gets the crap kicked out of him throughout this entire movie. By the end of the movie, he's limping, he's just covered in blood, he's so many cuts, he's been shot several times, he's just bleeding, he's like, hey honey, how you doing? You doing alright? Okay, cool. You guys. I mean, it's like, it's, it's kind of funny, like, he's still, he's just still crap talking throughout the entire movie, even while he's getting beat up by, you know, the German terrorist, he, He's like, oh, God, you know, he's still crap talking and fighting and just putting his all into the action, and it's really awesome. And this movie has great action. It's brutal. This movie, it's bloodier than I remember it being. You know, it's not the goriest film ever made, but like, you know, pretty much every time someone gets shot, blood sprays out. You know, and it's pretty brutal, especially when Mr. Nuck. You know, never mind. That's a spoiler. <laughs> Probably shouldn't say. Anyways, um. But yeah, you know, it's a brutal movie, you know, it's violent, the fight scene was pretty rough, but it was awesome, uh, and yeah, it's, you know, it's just a very exciting, brutal, exaggeratedly realistic movie, and John McClane really, uh, was the perfect character to be put in the middle of this, and, uh, he's just so likable, the dialogue in this movie is great too, I mean, all of his one-liners are great, but not even just the one-liners, just, you know, all the, just the little banter that he has with the cop on the radio, it's just, it's great dialogue. Not just a bunch of one-liners back to back to back, you know. It's really likable. And the characters, they feel human. Even the terrorist, and that brings me to Hans Gruber. Um, Hans Gruber, yeah. Like, as with, like, I mean, you know, I, I've been hearing for years, like, Hans Gruber is one of the best films ever, just the same as I hear, like, Die Hard, one of the best movies ever. I finally sat down, and I had a clear head, and I absorbed Die Hard, and realized how awesome it was. Just the same with Hans Gruber. He's such a great villain. He's so likable. He's like, I mean, he's a douche. He's a bad person, and he's evil. He murders people. He's like, okay, like, you're not going to help me? So, pfft. he just he kills several people in cold blood. He's a bad person. But he's likable. He's like, his dialogue is funny. He's funny. He's a funny guy. He cracks some pretty good jokes throughout the movie, but it's not over the top, you know? He's not like, he's not like the Joker or something to where, like, yeah, he's funny, but, like, he's really over the It's not like that. Like, he's a person. But he's a clever guy, and he just so happens to be a douche, so it makes it hard to like him, but he is very likable, and I love his dialogue with John McClane's where they're talking over the radio. And of course you get the, you know, the trademark line of the movie, yippee ki yay mother, you know, I try to refrain from profanity on the channel, so I guess I'm not going to say it, but yeah, still, it's uh, great dialogue, great characters. I, I mean, even Bonnie Bedelia as Holly, she's great. I mean, she's not in the movie that much, but she served the role very well. You completely understand where she's coming from. At the beginning of the movie, when you see her arguing with John, you understand his point of view, but you understand her point of view, you know, good human characters. And all the other characters uh, that I didn't delve into very much, like the cop that John McClane is constantly talking to on the radio, like all the douchebag cops that are, like, not really trusting him, like that guy from The Breakfast Club, even he, like, he means well. Like, you know, he's not just a one-dimensional jerk. Like, I mean, like, he seems that way at first. However, by the end of the movie, I mean, like, when you see the SWAT team is rolling in and they're, like, they have no qualms with losing 25 to 30 percent of the hostages, they're like, yeah, you know, 75 percent of the people made it out. That's good enough. I don't care if we kill off, like, 10 people accidentally in the explosion and gunfire. You know, who cares? And they're just idiots and they're jerks. And, I mean, when they're going in, like, you know, that guy is like, I don't, I don't like this. This isn't good. You know, so he actually cares. You know, he's trying to do the right thing. He's just kind of stupid. And he's not as smart as John McClane. And I love when John McClane is just crap talking him and making him feel like an idiot. He's just, and this is a really funny movie. Um, it's, it's just very entertaining. Um, but back to the action. Like, I mean, I also, I mean, it would be moronic of me to not talk about 
the way this movie looks. This movie looks insanely great. This movie, John McTiernan is one of the best direct, directors, directors of action ever. Just this movie, every second of the movie, the camera is just moving, but it doesn't, it's not shaky cam. There's no shaky cam in this movie. This is the 80s. They didn't use shaky cam yet. Uh, yeah, it's just, I mean, there's so many great sweeping shots, and there's sometimes there's long takes, and like the action is timed perfectly. I love this part to where John McClane, he's running from bad guys, they're shooting at him, and he's running, but he's like about, little does he know, he's about to run to the sights of another bad guy who's like creeping up uh, higher up on the roof, he's about to shoot him, but the way it's all done in one shot, like, you know, you see like John McClane, or you see the bad guy shooting, and then you see John McClane shooting, and then it sort of like follows him as he runs, but then it goes up, and you see him, and you see he's walking up, it's just, this movie is directed so dynamically. And not to just, like, recite other reviewers or anything like that, but I'm not trying to just rip other people off in the reviews, but I'm just gonna... I can't remember exactly the way this guy phrased it, but he was talking about, is Die Hard really that good? He's a great channel, you know, you definitely, you guys, you should check out his videos if you like movie reviews and stuff, but he was saying, or he phrased it perfectly, he was like, uh, Die Hard is essentially just a low-key, um, psycho or not psychological, it's basically a low-key... Uh, you know, close quarters, uh, claustrophobic thriller, and most movies of this kind would be, just be done, like, it's only from John McClane's point of view, the, it doesn't, like, show the perspectives of all the other characters, it'd just be, it's an isolated thriller. However, the way it's executed, it's shot and cut and edited and scored, I'll get to that in a second, like an epic war film, you know, it's, it's like that, you know, it's really well done. Anyway, yeah, you should check that guy's videos out, and like, that was the perfect way to phrase it. That's the great way to look at it. And, yeah, this movie, it, if it was by any other director, you know, it would have been just a, it wouldn't really even be an action movie. It'd just be, you know, a thriller about a cop. You know, it, it'd just be him sneaking around. And, like, really, the action in this movie, it's not like whenever John McClane gets into a gunfight, he's not taking out, like, 15 bad guys at a time. He's not John Wick or John Rambo or whatever. Uh, wow, there's a lot of action heroes named John. <laughs> Anyways, um... But yeah, so it's not like that. Like, I mean, when he gets into, you know, when he gets ambushed, like, either no one gets killed at all, like, they just keep on missing at each other, and then he luckily gets away. Either that, or John McClane, he kills, like, one person at a time in this entire action scene, to one or two, maybe, and then he gets away, you know? So it's not like legions of bad guys are dying in each effort every action scene, you know, it's like one or two people, and if it was directed by any other person, it would just be, you know, just a short thing, like the bad guy comes around the corner, bam, and that would be the entire action scene, but he does it, it makes it so epic, it's way more epic than any movie like this you would expect it to be, but it makes Die Hard into one of the best action movies ever made, just the direction is so dynamic, the shots are constantly sweeping over and under the sort of scenery, and it's just great, it just looks beautiful, really, it's perfect direction and it's so fast paced and once this movie gets going and it gets going pretty early on you only get like 20 minutes at the beginning and the 20 minutes at the beginning are absolutely not boring you get really interested and right off the bat you feel for john mcclain's character You're like dang ah man feel bad for this guy um but then as soon as the action starts bam just the entire movie so fast paced i mean john mcclain he's like Really, every second, he's in serious danger. It's like, oh my gosh, he's about to get hurt. And like I said, by the end of the movie, he's been shot several times. I mean, he's bleeding. His feet are cut. I mean, you know, it's just, it's really bad. It's like, oh my gosh. He looks like the victim of, like, Jason Voorhees in a horror movie by the end of the movie. It looks like he should be dead. But he's not. He's still limping along. Hey, honey. It's just, it's great. He's so likable. And yeah, just the action is great. And the musical score, it really also adds to the epic feel of this movie. Now, the first couple times I watched the movie, like, that was one of the things that I kind of perceived as a problem. I was like, this mu musical score, it's like overly loud at times. Like, why is it so loud and grand and epic? I wouldn't expect a movie of this sort to have that kind of type of score. But after I watched this guy's review, I totally get it now. It's the style that they were going for. It just makes this movie so much more epic and grand in scope and scale than you would expect it to be. And that's brilliant. It's the way it's executed. This is a masterfully done action film. It just in regards to the direction and the music and the action, but that's not even taking into account the great characters and the great dialogue. And the story is simplistic, but it works perfectly. The best action movies out there have simplistic stories. Speed. Just, you know, it, that's it. It's just a car. It has to keep going. If it goes under a certain speed, it blows up. That's it. 
So you gotta keep going, instantly, bam. Really fast paced movie throughout the entire movie. Same thing with Die Hard, it's so fast paced, John McClane's constantly sneaking around, has to take out bad, go bad boys, bad guys, and you get great action, get skirmishes, and it's just brilliantly directed, brilliantly scored, very well written, such a great villain. He's menacing, but he's really funny and likable at the same time. And all the other terrorists, like even the other terrorists, like in any other movie, they'd just be henchmen, you know, they'd just be like, um, like in Die Hard ripoffs, for instance, like White House Down. Not Olympus Has Fallen, Olympus Has Fallen is actually a really good movie, but White House Down, just the bad guys, you don't, like it tries to do what Die Hard does and give them personalities, like each individual bad guy, like a personality, you know, like, I mean, they're not like main characters per se, but you know, it makes it to where like they feel like actual people to an extent they just happen to you know actually know how to use weapons pretty well on their good in fights and stuff but it just did it terrible because the acting was bad the script script was just awful this movie every single bad guy to an extent you kind of like them because they're what little dialogue some of them have they're cool and also they just look cool the way they act the way they look like their demeanor is cool they're just and they're really menacing and you like, some of the bad guys, like, you actually kind of get to know them by the end of the movie, and they're pretty cool. And I'm not even talking about Hans Gruber, because he is one of the main characters. But the other guys, even just the little henchmen, they're actually pretty cool. Like, that guy, like, he, you know, like, just a little moment. He's just, like, he goes up, like, he's, you know, aiming his gun at the front of the building on the first floor. And all of a sudden, he sees a chocolate bar. He's like, actually, I don't want this one. Get that truck. <laughs> it's like, I mean, there was no reason for them to do that at all, but just that little moment right there, it gives that guy some personality, and it makes it really cool, and just, there are so many things in this movie, like, you would not expect it to have been done that way, but it is done that way, and it makes this movie unique, and John McTiernan, man, he's such a great director, <laughs> and this movie, like I, like I said, I'm so glad that I finally just cleared my mind and enjoyed this movie for what it is, and what it is is just fantastic, it's an amazing action film, the characters are great, pretty much everything about it is great, and it's just so exciting and explosive and action -like. it's just, I almost said the characters are great again, <laughs> and it's just really cool, it's violent, it's brutal, and... Yeah, it's one of the most exciting films I've seen up there with Raiders of the Lost Ark or Aliens or Star Wars. It's an amazing movie, and I give it an A+. And yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please rate and comment and subscribe. And if you want to, you can also share. And again, I don't know if this is the case, but if this video does get uploaded in early January, I apologize, you know, I, I, you know. But still, it's not quite outside of the Christmas season yet. I mean, you're still, like, just recovering from the Christmas season. So you still have lingering bits of, like, yeah, it still feels like Christmas time. You might not have even taken out the Christmas tree or your Christmas lights at that time. So, anyway, yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Goodbye.